The first pattern I'm going to do is one called the Soft Tackle Screamer, and it's one of my favorite uh, patterns, uh, you know, for bait fish imitation, and uh, it's a very, very simple one, but a very, very effective one. It has a lot of life uh, and movement when it's fished, and it's very, very easy to tie. It's a good fly for uh, anyone from a beginner to uh, an expert to, uh, to enjoy tying. It's uh, easily uh, my favorite fly. You know, to fish when I'm fishing uh, a bait fish imitation. Hmm. And uh, I'd like to begin with just a, a brief mention of the material I, material I use. It's uh, marabou, uh, a marabou feather, a blood marabou feather. It's from a turkey, but all birds, most birds will have a similar feather. This one is called blood marabou because it has a very, very thin stem. And that makes it very, very easy to work with, as opposed to this feather here, for instance, which has a very, very thick stem. And that's the most common you find in, in shops or in packages that you get of marabou feathers. This feather is very, very difficult to work with. The thicker the stem, the more difficult it is to work with. The thinner the stem, the better the, uh, the feather. So what I'm going to do is, to begin with, I've, I've laid my thread on the hook. Uh, there is no body to this fly. It's a very simple, minimalist um, pattern that has all the elements of bait fish imitation with no unnecessary elaboration. So, if I can begin now, I'm going to snip off a piece of mylar tinsel and I'm just going to lay it on the hook, on the top of the hook like so, with only two, two turns of thread. I'll put this over so I can see. That illuminates it a little bit better. Doesn't it? Does it feel as well? Or? That's fine now, okay, yes. Because I, I can't see without it. Yes, well, I'll concentrate on the fly now. Okay. So I've, I've put this on top of the hook shank with only two turns of thread, like so. And I'm going to take the baron, go on the strand, and bring it back and secure it in place with only two turns of thread. You don't want to use a lot of turns of thread. It's very important. Use the fewest, the least amount of uh, thread you possibly can. Now I'm going to simply take, this is all the tinsel we're going to use, by the way. I'm going to clip part of this feather away. Is this in the, you've got to look at this in the, You've got to tell me where, where you want to hold it. There we go. That's fine. I'm going to clip that away. And I'm going to save this piece because I can make maybe two other flies out of this. There's no such thing as junk or scrap. I use everything I possibly can. So I'm going to lay that aside. And then I'm going to lay this on top of the hook, concave side down. That makes it easier to uh, control the feather and also to get a nice, a nice, uh, even draw. This little tool that I like is called an easy mini hook. It's my favorite form of hackle plier. I don't use hackle pliers anymore because this does uh, everything I want it to do and more. I separate these fibers down so that I grasp only the stem with these hackle pliers or these this easy mini hook. And then I just wrap it around the hook shank as I would any wet fly hackle or dry fly hackle. And while I'm winding, I stroke back the fibers with my fingers. So, and I take three or four turns of hackle. You can make it as thick or as thin as you want. Uh, but three or four turns is usually sufficient. Always leave room for the head. Don't crowd the eye of the hook. That's a very, the most common mistake fly tires make. You always want to leave room at the near the eye of the hook for for a neatly formed head. You want to clip away all the uh, superflu superfluous overflurdy yeah, material. And with with your little brush, this is another tool that's very very handy. You can get these or something like it in a perfumerie or a, if you're in the States at a drugstore, they're very cheap. And I comb out all the tied down hackles so that it's very, um, you know, smooth and there are no uh, tied down hackles. Now, we're almost
almost done, believe it or not. This feather here, this feather here, I'm going to hold up so you can focus on it. Uh, there's a uh, mallard, a stock on that I've dyed myself yellow. And because the stock on feather is, is very, very flat, you're going to have to strip away some of the fibers. And when you tie it in, con again, concave side down, you're going to have to tie it in flat because it, it, it is uh, flat. And you're going to have to lift the feather up like so and grasp again only the, only the stem. Can you see that? Only the stem. Yeah. You don't want to grasp any of the fibers. And because it's flat, you might have to turn it just a little so that when you wind, you're winding on the, on the flat side of the feather and not on the edges. Otherwise, you won't be able to control the fibers. And again, as you wind, stroke the fibers back with your thumb and forefinger so that they all lie over the over the wing and completely surround it. Excuse me. Clip off the excess, always clip off the excess. Because this material is very, very webby, that means it, stick, it has a tendency to stick together, you're going to um, have to separate some of the fibers with your brush or comb so that they're all the way around uh, the hook shank and evenly distributed. You can also wet your fingers just a little to control these. And now you're ready you know, to form the head. And I like a nice, smoothly tapered head, so making sure that I've covered up all unnecessary materials. I might take a, a few extra turns here. I like the head to be proportionate to the rest of the fly. I don't like it to be too small or too, or too big. So I take a few extra pains with this, with this process. And using my web finisher, I just take a few extra turns, make sure I flatten it out. By using whip finisher, you actually flatten out the thread so that you get a super smooth head. It fills in all the uneven spaces when you do that. And then I just simply break it off, maybe give it an extra combing. And there we have the finished fly. That's beautiful. I, 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 I thank you. Did you say uh, anything about the hook? Oh, are we recording now? Yes. We are. Oh, the hook I use, I prefer to use on this. And the idea of this fly was actually, in a sense, de designed around the shape of the hook. It, the hook I use is a 3406 Mustad, or a 34007, or 3407 if, you, if you're using it for salt water. The 34007 is a stainless steel. Um, the other is, is a, uh, a bronze, and I like it because it has a nice wide gap, and it's a fairly heavy hook, so that it sinks the marabou quickly. And uh, because it has a wide gap, these fibers can go in and out of it without uh, having a tendency to wrap around the hook shank. There's f movement, there's freedom of movement. If the if the hook shank is uh, gap is too too narrow or the hook shank is too long. You'll, uh, the force of uh, gravity will, and, and the, the force of physics will move these fibers all around the hook and, and they'll tend to tangle up much more uh, frequently uh, than they will with, if there's a short gap and a, and a wide, um, I mean a wide gap and a short shank. Mm. Let me get that one yeah. straight. <laughs> Is it anything? I'm going to continue with uh, the idea of the soft tackle streamer, what we've just done, or what I've just done, has been to tie a very simple one colored uh, soft tackle streamer. Now, what I'm going to do is tie a soft tackle streamer with two colors. And just for the sake of uh, 
photography, I'm going to use two fairly bright feathers, a yellow and an orange. Now you can blend these uh, feathers in any color. Color has nothing to do with design. Uh, this is purely for photographic purposes. Some apply using orange and, and yellow I might use for uh, tarpon or I might use for uh, uh, brown trout. Uh, rainbow trout in Alaska, they're very bright, you might not use these combinations. But what I want to do is, I have two different feathers, one orange and one yellow. I'm going to hold them up against each other so that the fibers on each side are roughly the same length. I want fibers of equal length, that way I get a, a balance of feather. And I'm going to clip this away, clip away the thick part of the stem, the thicker part, and make yourself uh, a little space. And because I'm using two feathers, that means I need only half the material. So if I want to tie a really thick fly, I'll use both feathers together. If not, then what I'll do, if I want to emphasize the orange, I might peel away some of the yellow. If I want to de-emphasize the orange, I'll just peel away some of the um, orange. In this case, I want them fairly equal. So I'm going to peel away equal amounts on from each each uh, feather. Again I tie them in concave side down, clip away the excess before I do anything else. I clip away the excess. I always leave room for the head. There always has to be uh, a couple of uh, turns of thread free up in the head area. And I lift both of these feathers together and with my easy pliers there I grasp both both stems and I wind them in together like so. Very, very simple. Very, very simple. And what I am ending up with here is a blending, you know, of colors. I don't know if it shows up on the, uh, the screen, but you have a definite, you know, blending of colors. I could tie three or four colors in together if I wanted a fly of the uh, that incorporated many different colors, or at least four. But this way we have two. We have yellow and orange blended together. I clip off the excess, stroke back these fibers. I like to wet my fingers a little, and that way I, I can control the fibers a little more easily. And then go back. See, I've left plenty of room for, for the collar. Now, because I have two collars, I could choose to emphasize one color or another with the collar hackle, the stock on, guide stock on. Uh, if I want to emphasize the yellow, I'll use a, a stock on feather that is yellow. If I want to emphasize the orange, I might use a, I would use a, uh, an orange dyed feather. If I wanted to tone down both colors, I would use a, um, an undyed mallard feather. In this case, I want to just put in a little more yellow. So I'll attach that feather to the top of the hook shank, concave side down, and wind forward, secure it a bit. Again, clipping off the excess, and again, leaving a little room up near the eye of the hook so that uh, that remains clear and free of all unnecessary material. And again, because the feather is flat, I'm going to have to turn it so that I can wind on the flat side of the uh, of the material. And as you're winding, as you're turning, again, stroke back the fibers towards the rear so that they have a nice, give a nice uh, covering to the uh, rest of the fly. Again, I clip off the excess. Notice there's, there's no excess material up near the uh, head area. And again, I just take my little comb and comb out some of the fibers and make sure that they're evenly spaced and all the way around the hook. You don't want too many on one side and not enough on the other. Just make sure they're even. Just wet your fingers a little and that way you can see, you know, the. Uh, uh, the way they shape up. And again, I just build up a nice little tapered head proportionate to the rest of the body. 
covering up all excess excess material, making a nice smoothly shaped head. One of the things you want to avoid when you're you're tying large flies or <coughs> any fly to me, to be honest, is a an unsightly head. One of the sure signs of an amateur or sloppy tire. You should try always to be as neat as you can and not sloppy. So I, I generally take great pains with this head area. And I just whip it off and then then I would put a coat of varnish or lacquer on, on top of this. If, for instance, uh, are we focused on, on the fly? Yes. Okay. Let me just comb this. Now, if, if, for instance, I wanted to add another color to this fly, I could take this pen. This pen is just an ordinary spirit pen. Uh, it's water uh, resistant. I could just darken the top of this of these fibers with the with the pen, so that I could get a let's say I wanted a brown top over an olive. This this happens to be brown over orange. Just a little dark, a darker on the top. You can see the the addition I've made. And then because I've wet down the fibers, I might, this will all dry out. Makes a very nice three, now I have three colors. Added a dark top over yellow and orange combined. Whoops. So that's, that's another thing you can do with this, 